Hello, everyone. This is criminal profiler Pat Brown, and I want to talk about the new uh, media that's coming out in the last couple of days on Christian Bruckner and the reason why the Germans are looking at him as a suspect in the disappearance of Madeleine McCann. Remember, they were just in, in uh, Portugal. They spent 72 hours digging around uh, trying to and, and in the water here, trying to find evidence. Uh, 72 hours later, they stopped, uh, claimed they didn't have anything major, but that they were also digging up dirt uh, to check to see if it matched his van, which I think is interesting because after all, he did say he went there. I mean, it's, I don't know what that would prove, but the, the recent media reports have a lot more information on why he is a suspect in the eyes of the German prosecutor, Walters. And I want to do this a little differently than usual. Um, as you know, uh, well, maybe you don't know, I'm a pretty outspoken person on this case. Um, uh, along with uh, Gonzalo Amaral, who wrote uh, The Truth of the Lie, he was a de the detective on the case. Uh, he wrote the book because he believed that there was no abduction, that the, that the McCanns were involved in what happened to their daughter, and uh, the McCanns, um, uh, very litigious that they are, uh, got his book pulled off the market and fought for many, many years. Uh, to keep that book off the market, and they finally lost, and and his book is back on the market. Uh, my book is on the right, Profile of the Disappearance of Madeleine McCann. Uh, it was also pulled off the market. Uh, the the uh, McCanns um, threatened Amazon with a major libel lawsuit, and so Amazon pulled it. However, it is on the market at Barnes & Noble and Smashwords and Kobo and Apple. So I also found through my analysis that there did not seem to be evidence of an abduction. Okay, now I'm gonna put all that aside because I want to look at this from the perspective of a detective on a case. Should the Portuguese detectives, should the British detectives, should the German detectives look at a possible abduction of Madeline by someone like Christian Bruckner? And my answer to that is yes. And that may surprise many people because they're like, but you're pretty adamant that there was no abduction. Okay. But understand that when you are running an investigation, you may have looked at all the evidence and say it looks, it focuses on this direction, but there are possibilities, always a possibility that some evidence is missing that would propel you over here. It's also possible that you're just wrong. <laughs> People can be wrong. Detectives can be wrong. Profilers can be wrong. Because when you're working on a case, nothing is absolute until you have the evidence to take the person to court and prosecute them and find them guilty. Now, at that point, then you can say that person, that that's the person who did it and this is what happened. Hopefully that there's sufficient evidence to do so. But as a detective working on a case, you always have to leave open any possibility, except for aliens. Well, we'll, we'll throw that up, th throw that away because some people go off on ridiculous tangents. But anything that is a possibility, you want to do due diligence and look at the evidence that somebody else could have done it, or, or perhaps what went down is 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 slightly different. So, um, excuse me a second, <laughs> I have a cold. <laughs> I was trying to avoid doing this show because I, ah, hmm, terrible. So anyway, <clears throat> I'm going to do it anyway. Um, sorry. Uh, uh, in this case, one of the tragedies of the case was that when, when Scotland Yard got involved, they accepted a remit that said they would not look at this case as anything but an abduction. And in my opinion, they were not doing due diligence then. To, to say it could not be anything but an abduction is wrong, just as it would be wrong to say it can only not be an abduction. Both ways are wrong. You have to leave open a door to investigate any other possibilities. So when Scotland Yard did that, I think there was a problem. And following that, uh, if you only look at an abduction, you're obviously not going to look at the McCanns. But let's say you're doing due diligence and you can look in both directions. Now, it appears to me that uh, I can't say that the prosecutor Walters uh, was looking any place but 
an abduction in this case. However, however, let's say he has come across information that makes him think it could be an abduction, right? He's got significant information that he feels strongly about. Now, mind you, there is, as far as any evidence I've seen, no proof of an abduction. But sometimes having no proof of an abduction doesn't mean an abduction didn't happen. So there's that small thing where you have to leave that window open. So let's say I'm a detective on this case or a profiler working with the detectives. I would say, okay, let's take a look at the possibility, however small, that she was abducted because we don't want to let something go. That's, you know, if there, that's what happened. That's what happened. Okay. So let's look at Christian Bruckner from the eyes of someone who's looking at this as an abduction or a possible abduction and saying, is he a good suspect? I'll say it right up front. He's an excellent suspect. The guy is, is, I mean, he is what he is. He's a, he's a predator. He's a psychopath. He lived in the area. He's a creepy dude. Would he be on the top of my list for suspects if Madeleine McCann was abducted? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I want to read from two articles uh, so that you can understand where I'm I'm going to take each article. I'm going to go through it, and I'm going to say what, I, what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. Now, mind you, these are coming from two disreputable sources. <laughs> I, I don't think much of either one of them. First one is from The Independent. All right. This, the headline here is Madeleine McCann suspects chilling claim to the man who reported him to police. She didn't scream. She didn't scream. All right. What does this mean? All right. Let's look at it. The prime suspect in the Madeleine McCann case, prime suspect in the eyes of Walters, mind you, I don't know that he's a prime suspect for everybody, but for Walters, yes. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, he has claimed um, that a former friend, um, a former friend alleged he made a chilling comment about the case. Okay. A German prisoner, Christian Bruckner, was first named in connection with the unsolved mystery in the summer of 2020 and officially named as a suspect last year. His yellow and white VW uh, camper van was reportedly identified as having been near to Praia de Luz resort in Portugal where the young girl went missing in May 3rd, 2007. All right, let's start, start there. He drove a camper van. It was near Praia de Luz. Where did he live? Near Praia de Luz. That doesn't mean that he kidnapped Madeleine McCann in the van. It just means he lives in there and he drives a van. Nobody saw a van drive away from the, the vacation flat of the McCanns. If they had seen that, this would be much more meaningful. But that's not what happened. It just, they, he has a van. And the van was in the area, as were everybody else's vehicle. Now, most people aren't predators, but sex predators. But still, his van wasn't seen at that location. It was just in the area of Praia de Luz. Three-year-old Madeline disappeared from the bed of her holiday apartment while her parents and family friends dined on 180. 80 feet away. Metropolitan Police took over the investigation, Operation Grange, in 2011, but they hit dead ends. There was not another significant suspect in the case since 2007 until Bruckner. All right. Which is interesting, because if Bruckner was such a creepy dude in the area, I'm not sure why he wasn't a suspect early on. He, he seems like a better suspect. And wasn't there a guy who drove a tractor and a whole bunch, a bunch of other people that didn't look like good suspects at all? I'm not sure why he wouldn't have been a suspect right away if you think it's an abduction. So Bruckner's in prison for the rape of a woman in prior deluge in 2005 and is suspected of further rapes and child sex abuse committed in the area between 2000 and 2017. Now, stop here. Suspected of, not proven to have committed. And that's important. Although he could have, it's not proven. Uh, during his time in prison, he's said to have written several letters in a, in a bid to clear his name and complain about his treatment in prison. Apparently, a, for, a former friend said, um, <laughs> according to a letter seen by the Daily Mail, Bruckner claimed he became a key suspect after his former friend told police he said, yes, she did not scream when talking about the case around one year after Madeline disappeared. And that comment was super creepy. All right. 
Now, let me go to the section where it talks about how he made the comment, because this is one of the problems. First of all, I, I can't get it clear here whether Bruckner said he made that comment or his friend just made, uh, said, he's claiming his friend made up that he said that. But even if he said that, those particular words, the question is, how did he say it? He quotes, the guy's name is, I don't know how to pronounce it, Bushing. Uh, he supposedly said, Seyferth, another witness, was also there as well. And Michael, another witness, Manfred, Christ, Manfred, I don't know. Okay, Christian and I then started talking about Portugal. It was then Christian made a comment about the missing girl. Christian asked me if I was still going to Portugal. I replied, I'm no longer going to Portugal, Portugal because there are too many problems there. Portugal has too many police for me on account of the missing child. Now, one could say that maybe he committed the crime, right? Because he's worried about the police and the missing child. But that's not what this is about. And Christian says in response, it is indeed strange that she disappeared without a trace. Yes, she did not scream. Now this, this comment, if he said it, it supposedly <coughs> means that, this is the way it's being interpreted. He had Madeline in his possession and it was, it was strange. Well, it was strange that she disappeared without a trace, but she did not scream. Well, He's not saying the child is in his possession when she did not scream. He's simply saying that it was odd that she disappeared without a trace. And one of the lacking traces was her screaming when she disappeared. And other people have pointed this out too, that if somebody went into the, uh, into the flat, climbed in there and grabbed the child, the child did not scream. Nobody heard a scream from a child being carried off. Uh, of course, she could have had her mouth covered or she could have been knocked out. But the point being that he might, he's simply saying it's strange that nobody heard, uh, strange she didn't scream. That is not proof that he took her because he's not saying I took her and she didn't scream when I was taking her. He also isn't saying, and then I kidnapped her and she never scr screamed after the fact. That is not what he's saying. So we have a jumping to conclusions. They're already having a discussion about Portugal and Madame McCann. And I'm going to guarantee you a whole bunch of people could say something that sounds a little like, oh, maybe that means they did it. Somebody could, for example, say, well, he seemed real interested in the case of Madeleine McCann. Well, if you live in Port Praia de Luz, pretty much you are interested, even if you're not a sex predator, you'd be interested. It doesn't mean you kidnapped her. <laughs> um, and if you could say all kinds of things, and it doesn't mean that you did who are involved in a, an abduction of the child and killed her. So to me, that's quite meaningless. All right. Bruckner's lawyer told the newspaper, it remains to be seen whether this conversation took place at all, as we have other witnesses who said it didn't. Now, I don't know what Bruckner's saying. He can't remember. Um, he didn't say it like that. But even if it, he did say that, it's not very meaningful. It's just not. All right. And the last time Bruckner claims he had a conversation with there's Bushing guy. Uh, it was in 2007 about a drug deal between them. Bushing was arrested in 2017 while trying to smuggle migrants from Greece to Italy. It is claimed that he gave the statement to the police after his arrest. And one of the things the police have claimed is that they didn't push push him into saying anything. Um, that you know he's not being offered a deal. So why did he say it? I don't know. Why did he say it? Maybe he was offered something. I don't have any clue. Um, <clears throat> but even if he did, wasn't offered something and said it, doesn't make it true. No, it doesn't. Maybe he just doesn't like Bruckner, which apparently they had a falling out. So he clearly doesn't like Bruckner. Now let me go to the second article. This is from the New York Post. All right. Let's see what they have to say. Okay, hold on a second. My page is acting funny here. Oh, here we go. Okay. New search in Madeleine McCann case sought out gun camcorder video evidence. A lot of time we were led to believe they were looking for Maddie's body or her pajamas and all this stuff, but clearly they didn't find that there. Now they're saying that they were looking for a gun and a camcorder video. All right. Why were they doing this? 
Investigators who scoured a Portuguese reservoir for clues in the 16-year mystery of missing British tot, Madeleine McCann, were reportedly looking for a gun and a camcorder that belonged to the prime suspect. Search teams, uh, they searched it, blah, blah, blah. Why did they search this location, this, this dam? After a criminal, criminal informant, that's the same guy who said he said Maddie didn't scream, a criminal informant alerted prosecutors the firearm and video device may have been dumped there after they were stolen from the home of sex offender Christian Bruckner in 2007. I like the term may. Well, is it either was or wasn't, so I don't know what the word may is. All right. Now, an unidentified jailhouse informant, which has already been identified, confirmed earlier claims by German nationals Manfred Seyferth and, oh, this is a different one, and I can't pronounce any of these names, Bushing, who told authorities that they took the gun and camcorder from Bruckner's Algarve home the same year Mad Madeline went missing. Okay, so they broke into his house and supposedly stole the gun and the camcorder. And they supposedly they had been doing some burglaries in the area and they, and they, they had a falling out. So now they're breaking into Bruckner's home, supposedly. Again, these are claims. And you have to be careful when you're doing detective work to understand that when somebody claims something, it doesn't mean it's true. It might mean you should look, you should investigate further. I get that because sometimes they are telling the truth. I mean, just because they're bad guys doesn't mean they don't sometimes occasionally tell the truth. Um, and for maybe they want to get the guy. Maybe they don't like him and they're like, hey, we're going to screw him. So they tell the truth or maybe they lie. We don't know. So anyway, the pair alleged the camcorder had footage of Bruckner torturing and raping an American woman and a 15-year-old girl. Alleged, another claim. And investigators want to know if the device also had video evidence of Madeline. Okay. Uh, why don't these guys say if it had video evidence of Madeline? Is it because they only watched a piece of it and then went, oh my God, that's horrifying. Wouldn't they be curious what's on the rest of it? I find that a little strange. Uh, when the video camera was played, okay, this is the source. <coughs> Excuse me again. <coughs> I'm fighting something here. I've been sick for like three days. Um, uh, investigators want to know if the device, okay. Uh, when the video camera was played, it showed a masked man carrying out a sex attack on a woman and the voice they heard was Bruckner's. A source told the news outlet. Seifert said a gun was also found and that after finding the video camera, they panicked, drove off, and later threw both items in the lake. Okay, hold on a second. Why? Okay. Why are they panicking? <laughs> Why do they want to throw the gun away? Why do they want to throw the, the camcorder away? Why are, they have Why are they panicking? It's not them on the video, is it? Why, why is this a necessity? And so then supposedly they went to the reservoir and chucked it in there. Uh, why did they drive all that distance to this reservoir? Why didn't they just chuck it someplace else? And, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, there's a lot of possibilities they could have done with this other than here. Are they saying, are they throwing it here because that's where Bruckner went and hung out? Are they just telling the police they threw it here because that's where Bruckner hung out? I, I, you know, there's not even a good explanation of this at this point. Um, I don't know what the police interview might have had in it, whether it's something more convincing than that, but so far it's not real convincing. So they went, if they're taking this on face value or maybe it's true, they went and did a lot of searching and found nothing. This is the second time this has been searched too and has come up with nothing. So, yeah. So, yeah, let's go further. Um, Seyfrith has, uh, Seyfrith has told investigators the material on the videotape was evil. And this is coming from a guy who's pretty evil himself. And if this can be found, will be vital to building a case against Bruckner. Um, no, it's not going to build a case against Bruckner as far as Madeleine McCann goes, because I don't care if on that videotape, there are 10 
assaults on people, even children. I care about the fact that that would be there. And then you would have him convicted of all those other crimes. But unless it has Madeleine McCann on there, it's not going to convict him of the abduction of Madeleine McCann because there's no proof, A, still of an abduction, B, no proof linking him to Madeleine McCann other than someone claiming that he made a statement that they thought was weird, you know, which we don't even know is true. So hold on a second. Hmm. Okay. Now let's see what else is here. Uh, Oh, Bruckner, Seyforth and Bushing were allegedly part of a petty criminal group in Algarve through the mid 2000s, but fell out by the time Madeline disappeared. Okay, wait a minute. I remember this whole thing. Uh, When Madeline did disappear, they were talking about these burglars that they were burglarizing places and they kidnapped Maddie because she screamed or something or she saw them. And so they just kidnapped her. I remember that was a theory once. Uh, But these supposedly these guys supposedly broke up before Madeline McCann was even went just before she disappeared. Okay, so. So I'm trying to think about this. So they already broke up, but yet the, supposedly after Madeleine McCann disappeared, they broke into Bruckner's place and stole a gun and a camcorder, looked at it, got creeped out and threw it <laughs> in this reservoir. All right. It's a little strange. Um, now, let's see. Uh See if there's anything else of use in this article. Um, news of the searchers' goals came a day after another source. I think I love all these sources. Uh, told the Times Bruckner visited the site some days after Madeline was allegedly kidnapped. Some days. Okay, what does that mean? Who again? Who is to saying that he visited this location? How do they know he visited this location? When did he visit this location? This is so vague. Is this, is this is something, unless the detectives have something a little bit stronger than this, big deal. And we also don't know that there's anything that happened at this location. It, let's say his ex-buddies stole his gun and his camcorder and chucked it in here. What does that have to do with him visiting there? Absolutely nothing. So, so you know. And they didn't find the body of Madeleine McCann here. They didn't find her pajamas here. They didn't find anything that linked Madeleine McCann to this reservoir. So what does it matter if he went there 700 times? If she's not there, it's pretty meaningless. Um, Then it says, they also said that the child may have been alive for two or three days before investigators believe she was killed. Okay. Uh, How would you know that? Once upon a time, the investigators said that Bruckner kidnapped her and took her to Germany. And that didn't turn out. Now they're saying she was alive at least two or three days before she was killed. How would they know that? (laughs) I, I don't even understand how they would know that unless they had absolute proof. Uh, and apparently they do not. So, <laughs> as usual, uh, I've also said this over and over again, when a sex predator kidnaps a child at her, of her age, usually they're dead within a few hours. They rape and murder them quickly because they get their cheap thrill and they don't want to have a toddler in their care because toddlers are not fun. They cry. They constantly cry and whine and need things and it's not fun to take care of a toddler. Now, so, now theoretically, yes, he, maybe he was the type that liked to have a whiny child in his van for days on end and rape them over and over again. That has happened. It's rare. Has happened. But there's no way they could know this. So it's just that's just making up stuff that it doesn't have evidence to back it. Um, let's see. Uh, if there's any other useful information on this thing. Um, They dug a bunch of holes. 
didn't get anything out of them, I'm assuming. Okay. Um, although police are not believed to have found anything substantive, sources told the Daily Mail the, that soil from the dam will be taken back to Germany for analysis. Okay. Soil samples contain stones, pollen, and a few other small components that can be transmitted during an act. That's true. You know, if he, if, if he took Maddie there and was assaulting her, he could have gotten stuff, stuff on his shoes, the, the soil on his shoes and pollen on his shoes. That's true. Uh, that means that if I find old shoes, for example, that now contain exactly the same components as in the earth, I know the person was there. Okay, he's already said he goes there. <laughs> Supposedly, if he went there and liked to, to go to this location, I don't care if, again, 100 times this location doesn't mean it has anything to do with Madeleine McCann. I don't care if he's got dirt all over his van and all over his shoes. It's meaningless. Now, where would it mean something? Let's say... Hmm. Let me come up with something that makes more sense. Uh, let's say, for example, uh, a person uh, kidnaps somebody and the fibers from their clothing are in their van. And, and of course, the fibers aren't absolute, but that would be interesting. That has fibers that are similar. Um Let's say you live in a place that's very unique. That person says they've never been to. Let's say there's a, you know, I see this in these uh, CSI shows. Let's say there's some kind of flower there. It's only in this one exact location. And this person touched that flower and got the pollen on their, their, their jacket and then brought it into their van. And, and th that was the place they found the body of the child. Now, if that person, th that would be so unique that the body of this child was found next to this weird flowering plant that only flowered in that location and no place else in a thousand miles. And this guy had it in his van, the pollen from that plant. I'm going to say that had some meaning, but the, <laughs> that there's dirt from this location in his van would be absolutely useless information. Absolutely useless. And it's nonsense. Um, German prosecutor Hans, Han, I'm sorry, German prosecutor Hans Christian Walters always confused him with a Danish guy, Hans Christian Andersen, who wrote nice fairy tales. And Hans Christian and Walter seems to make up fairy tales, but I digress. Um, if we don't find anything, we will certainly tell you quickly. <laughs> He's been not telling us quickly for the last three years. If there were any finds, that would probably not be possible. Okay, so here's what he's trying to say. We would tell you if we didn't find anything, but we won't tell you if we do find something because we're saving that for prosecution. So when we don't hear anything, we have to assume that means they found something. <laughs> wow, that's, a, that's actually kind of clever way to put that. Okay. Uh, after the search concluded, the Portuguese judicial police also issued a statement confirming the collected material was in German hands and that safeguarding the interests of the investigation was a top priority, which is what you have to say. All right. Um, then that says down here, interesting, shortly after officials announced the, uh, the search, Gonzalo Amaral, the Portuguese detective who first led the McCann investigation, slammed the effort as an attempt to make Bruckner a scapegoat. In simple analysis, I see there is no new investigation. What is happening is an act of building the profile of a scapegoat and a virtual blaming. The now retired Amaral told a locally weekly, the Daily Mail reported. Little by little, the Germans built up the suspect's profile as a rapist, pedophile, and a murderer, gathering similar Portuguese cases, accusing him of them. And this is correct. He hasn't been convicted of any other cases that He's been convicted of a case, but not of all these other ones that he could have done. And then the great moment came and they named him to the world. In conclusion, they did not allow a professional and a serious investigation and made this individual a scapegoat as a suspect without any evidence or proof. All right. I'm going to end that part of it. Uh, those are the two articles. Now, um, 
do I agree with Gonzalo Amaro? As I said, if I were an investigator working on the case, a profiler working on the case, would I, out of all caution, take a look at this guy who did live in Pride de Luge and is a creep, <laughs> okay? Would I look at him as a possible suspect in what happened to Madeline McCann? Yes. Do, I have to do that to be fair. Even if I think otherwise, I would do that to be fair. Now, I'd be looking for actual evidence. <laughs> and one thing I wouldn't be doing, which is what Gonzalo Amaral said, is little by little leaking information to the world to make him look like he did it. Oh, I'm hearing. Sorry. <laughs> you hear that? Pretty little bells in the background. So that was a text on my phone. Um, I would not be leaking little by little by little, which is what Amaral is saying is happening. Little by little, people are becoming more and more invested in him being the person who's done something to Madeleine McCann. And this recent piece of information that came out, again, does the same thing. This is stuff that should be part of the investigation not part of the media report. So if Walters is looking at this guy and he has the right to do this, maybe he truly believes Madeleine McCann was abducted and he doesn't want to look at the McCanns in any way, shape or form any more than the British did with their um, Operation Grange. They just eliminated the McCanns immediately and refused to start at the beginning and, 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 and review everything. So if, if, if that's where the German prosecutor's at, that he believes 100% she was abducted, then he's going to look for people in the area who could have abducted her. And they had to be there around that time and have some reasonable access to the flat. And uh, he's a good suspect. I won't deny that. But like Amaral says, as far as I know, <coughs> excuse me again, as Amaral says, there is this point is zero evidence that he is did anything to Madame McCann. And I've been watching this bit by bit by bit, and I have not seen any evidence. I've seen uh, a theory being put out by Walters, I've seen, which is fine, he can put out a theory. I've seen claims that don't seem to come true um, of this and that. A lot of searches, a lot of uh, digging around, a lot of basically saying bad things about him. And now he's got these, um, these people who say he said this one thing about Myla McCann that she didn't scream and that they saw bad things on a camcorder. Not Madeleine McCann, but something else bad. And they chucked it into the water and it's not been found. That's not evidence. <laughs> that's not evidence. That's interesting information. And that's fine. You can, you can work with interesting information. Every detective will work with interesting information because you have to, because until you, you have to look at the information to see if it turns into evidence. Now, if they went here, and found the camcorder that they claimed they threw in here. And they went like this. And holy crap, there's Madeline McCann. Then I'll stand down and say, well, she was abducted after all. My theory was wrong. But <laughs> up until now, there is no evidence. So at the end of this, I want to say again, should detectives keep options open? Yes. There are anomalies in this world. You can have cases where for absolutely look like 95% of your brain said it absolutely looks like this. And it turns out not to be. And you're like blown away. Um, now, the more evidence, more evidence you have that builds in a direction is true evidence. Then the more you're likely to say, chances are this is, this is the person who did it. This is what happened. But... There are freaky anomalies. Um, sometimes evidence is lost. Sometimes ev evidence is misunderstood. Sometimes people behave in such a horrific way that they become suspects. And the McCann's behaviors made them suspects, uh, along with the evidence that 
well, there was no evidence of an abduction. There just wasn't. Doesn't mean it couldn't have happened. But the but the stories of the McCanns and their behaviors, a lot of things that they did and said, there was good reason to look at them and not such a good reason to look for a sex predator. But again, if I were working on the case, I would definitely do due diligence and I'd look to be sure that it wasn't this guy or some other guy. But at the same hand, I wouldn't take McCann's and refuse to ever investigate them, which is exactly what Germany and, and the UK have done. They just took the McCann's off, off the plate there and said, we're not going to look at them. In spite of the fact, there's reasons to look at them. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that's it. Uh, I will link below uh, my Madeline McCann um, uh a Madeline McCann video that I've done uh, done on my five major clues that point to my why my theory is leans toward the McCanns and leans away from an abduction. Um, and if you want to read uh, my book, uh, uh, just to say again, um, Gonzalo Amaral's book is, I believe, in English somewhere on the internet, uh, which I think you can just download for free. And I recommend you do that. Uh, my book is Profile of the Disappearance of Madeline McCann. You can find that. The link isn't below, um, but just go to Smashwords, Kobo, any of those places, except Amazon, <laughs> where you can't get it. And uh, you can download it from there. Um, and my, my analysis was based on police files and Kate McCann's own book. And, and Gosala Amaral, of course, was a detective on the case, so he should know a lot. Um, and he has a theory, and I have a theory. And as Jerry McCann said, we have the right to purport a theory. But if we do, <laughs> we get Carter rucked, and we <laughs> and our books get pulled off the market. But his is back, and mine is there. So, um, and I think he's got a second book out. So, check it out. Um, and meanwhile, we'll keep keep an eye out and see whether they ever do come up with actual evidence that Bruckner had anything to do with Madeline McCann. I thank you for being here. And sorry about that, <laughs> the coughing and the running nose. Uh, I could wait five days but to do this uh, show, but I decided I would go ahead. So <laughs> apologies. And do like and subscribe to the channel. Please do. And have many, many cases on the channel. This is an educational channel. Um, it's intended to help people understand how to analyze. That includes detectives on the job, uh, people getting into law enforcement, uh, people who like to be profilers, people who just want to analyze people. <laughs> um, and my... My, this is what my uh, channel is about, is helping people understand the thought processes, not so much pointing a finger and saying absolutely, but to understand the thought processes behind uh, doing crime scene analysis and criminal profiling. So thank you for being here. Bye.